Good afternoon, I'm Desiree Moses, coming to you live from In Your Ear Studios in Richmond. Our guests today are Bonnie Light Horseman, Josh Kaufman, Eric D. Johnson, and Aeneas Mitchell. Thank you all for being here. Thanks for having Thanks us. Thanks for having us. You dropped your self-titled debut last year, nominated for two Grammys. You just announced a new album coming out this fall. We're going to talk all about that, but what would you guys like to kick it off with? A song called uh, 10,000 Miles from our, from our record that we made yeah, a little while ago now. Fare thee well, my own true love. Farewell for a while, I'm going away, but I'll be back if I go 10,000 miles. If I go 10,000 miles, and the seas they will burn, my love. Thousand Miles, Bonnie Light Horseman live on WNRN off their self-titled debut that came out last year. I need to take a second and brag on each of you. So Bonnie Light Horseman is Aeneas Mitchell, Eric D. Johnson, and Josh Kaufman. You each have had prolific careers in your own right before forming this group. So Aeneas, you won eight Tony Awards for the Broadway musical Hades Town. Congratulations. Eric, you just dropped a career-spanning retrospective as Fruit Bats. Josh, you've worked with everyone from His Golden Messenger to Taylor Swift. I always like to say, if you're a fan of our music in this corner of the universe, Josh Kaufman has probably played on this song or helped <laughs> produce the song that you love. Um, let's take it back to the beginning. How did you all meet and decide to form this project where you're reimagining these folk songs? So I met Josh when we were both living in Brooklyn um, a few years ago, and we kind of um, just like discovered we had this shared like passion for traditional music and especially kind of British Isles stuff. And um, we started to mess around, and then um, I had just discovered Eric's band, uh, Fruit <coughs> Bats, and I think we sort of met on the internet. <laughs> traditional meeting place. <laughs> yeah. And then Josh was like, hey, I have this friend. Uh, you were passing through California. And like, I yeah. feel like Eric could be perfect for this music. And yeah. we're lucky that you yeah, totally. were psyched about it, too. We wooed him. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I, 
I thought I invited myself a Eric long likes time to think ago, he invited himself. <laughs> <laughs> now I want to talk about where some of that first record was recorded because wasn't there um, sort of an arts cooperative in Berlin where you all were working together? Can you tell us that story? Yeah, that was like a um, this pretty incredible thing um, put together by Justin Vernon of Bon Iver and Aaron Desner of The National, among many other people, um, that is like sort of a summer camp, like a dream come true summer camp for weird people doing cool, weird stuff and making music. And it's slightly hard to describe, but other than the fact that the, I think the beginning of the record was made in like a jet lagged fever dream. Um, yeah. In a Soviet, yeah, like East German, <laughs> so radio. East German radio station. Um, yeah. yeah. There's way more to it, but that's yeah. the that's the elevator pitch. I think the interesting thing about that space is that there were like there were like six small broadcasting studios, kind of like the one we're in, but like a, a building filled with them, and then some performance spaces as well. And like Eric said, just a bunch of weirdos kind of walking around trying to look for a place to make music or write or whatever they were going to do during that week. And so that's why that album has so many kind of like quick collaborations on it, kind of very in the moment moments mm. that happened because there was people kind of walking around and you could pull them in and have them sing on a song or play a drum, etc. Yeah. Now, each of your careers has involved a lot of collaboration. Um, and AS, you just dropped a new solo record. And again, Eric, I was talking about that Fruit Bats retrospective you've been working on. But what about collaborating together in this group was a different experience than you all had experienced um, in your previous collaborations in the past or on your solo records? I, it's been, I, it's, um, I'm not really sure. This, it's very easy, um, I'd like to say. Um, it's very easy, so I don't really know how to compare it to other things other than I think we have some complementary aspects to each other, personality-wise. Yeah, I feel the same way. Like, and I'm someone, you know, I worked on that musical for so long, and I, and it, I have a sort of feeling like things have to be hard. <laughs> like, it, has, it takes a lot, or it's going to take ten years, and it's going to be hard. And this thing was so easy in a way. It felt like just really intuitive. Like when we came together, and the first record is obviously um, leaning on all this traditional material. So it was like this deep well of stuff that we could work with. Um, and then this record that we're putting out now is original, um, and we co-wrote the songs together, and that process felt really also like easy and sort of like we were in a sandbox together, <laughs> yeah. you know, or like my eight-year-old when she's playing with her friends and it's like, how about this? How about, how about we're in outer space? And it's like, yes, yes. And. Yeah, yeah. yes, we and. Keep, yeah, using the improv comedy uh, sort of ethos of yes, and. <laughs> Yeah, the new album, Rolling Golden Holy, is coming out this fall. It's Bonnie Light Horseman live on WNRN. So you focus sort of on the folk music of the British Isles for the last record. Um, on the first single from this upcoming album, you took us to California. We'd love to hear you play it. Sure. One fine morning, just after dawn, my love and I ride in. Do on the trees, sunny in the east, slipping and a sliding. Goodbye to California. Seems like we hop. Seems good a time as any To believe in the land of plenty With broken hearts 
my love and I leaving Down the road a ways The hills of bliss Looking for a reason Goodbye to the old country Seems like you hardly knew me Seems good at times Bonnie Light Horseman live on WNRN, California, off the upcoming album, Rolling Golden Holy. It's coming out this fall. Bonnie Light Horseman is Anais Mitchell, Eric D. Johnson, and Josh Kaufman. So you're talking about California in this last song, and I'm noticing a pattern of the idea of place being central to some of your music, whether you're focusing on the music of the British Isles. Um, you know, we're talking about recording in Berlin. What, what about... California drew you to write this particular song. Eric, I know you live there now. Um, but yeah, what, what about the idea of place um, is inspirational for you in songwriting? Um, I think at the time that we were working on all these songs, we had all just kind of left the place that was that had been our home for a long time. Can we switch, actually? Yeah, I think I'm sure. Um, but, uh, and, sorry. <clears throat> Scattered. Um, and, uh, and um, so there was there were a lot of these like locations, and also just the feeling of leaving a place that felt like home, um, you know, with our loved ones and our families and stuff like that, and just sort of kind of, kind of out there, kind of wandering a little bit, a little untethered maybe for the first time in a long time. Yeah. So there was that. Anything to add there? Or? No, that was good. Thanks. Agree. <laughs> cool. <laughs> So at what point in time did you all decide to record a second record? You go from reimagining these old folk songs. I, I almost viewed that first album as, you know, friends having fun together, and as you mentioned, playing in the sandbox. So at what point did you all decide, we're going to continue this project on, and then we're going to go ahead and release some original material? Or was that always the plan from the beginning? I think we kind of knew right away when we started playing together that it wasn't going to be, you know, a one-off. Yeah. Um, it was just too fun. <laughs> and uh, it, we were a little interrupted by the pandemic. You know, we, I think we had a plan to get together and do some work that, that got scuttled. But um, as soon as we could, we, we, got, we got together and, and started to play again. Um, and we made most of this record last summer. Is that right? Yeah, in um, uh, July. And then some in the fall. Yeah, and in the Hudson Valley both times, which is a, sort of a spiritual home for us for the, this music. And um, and also with this amazing rhythm section, um, JT Bates on drums and Mike Lewis on bass. Um, those guys played with us in Berlin on the first <coughs> record, um, although there were a lot of other folks on that first one. And then they, they came out also and um, recorded these songs with us. Yeah, what was that songwriting process like? So when you're bringing those folk songs, that, that kind of seemed like everybody, it was just sort of a medley of ideas. And, oh, I was familiar with this one. And, you know, when you grew up in Vermont, you learned a lot of those songs. They were passed down. And you had learned a lot of those songs firsthand and brought some of those to the table. So for this one, when you're writing original songs, you know, talk about the genesis of an idea, maybe on a typical day. That's a good question. I mean, well, California's a good example, um, which was 
kind of started off as one thing, and I think we we said the whole yes and idea, which is just sort of like, um, yeah, you keep. I always like to think of songwriting as just walking down a hallway and going into rooms, so, or like, and maybe walking into the wrong hallway and then getting lost <laughs> for a while it's and behind finding your, your way one. back, and you yeah. something else got picked up, and yeah, it's um like a trial and error process, but not really with error, just, uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It was just like any other writing, I guess. It's slightly hard to describe. Well, were you very genre-focused at all? So the first album, you know, being reimagining of folk songs, did you all think, oh, we have to stay within this tradition, or did you not put any confines on your songwriting in that way? Yeah, no confines. No confines, yeah. And I think there's elements on the first record where we kind of strayed enough from the original like kind of source material if you want to call it that um that it didn't feel like much of a stretch actually almost like it's a continue i mean we kept moving further and further towards yeah what was original i think that's right yeah bonnie light horseman live on wnrn we'd love to hear one more what would you all like to play for us we're gonna play a song called The Roving, right you guys? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Also from our first record. Oh, 
of another eye Bonnie Light Horseman live on WNRN from In Your Ears Studios in Richmond. The new album, Rolling Golden Holy, out this fall. Anais, Josh, Eric, thank you all for being here. Thank Thanks you so much. Thank you. Thanks to In Your Ears Studios. Thanks to Carlos. Thanks to Andrea. Thanks to Paul. Thanks to all my WNRN colleagues. Thanks to Dave, Charlie, and Billy. Appreciate it. <laughs>